What would lead someone to visit a site like Pumapunku in Bolivia 50 plus times? It's because it doesn't fit the conventional archaeological story at all. There are many magnetic anomalies here that we are going to explore today, which standard archaeology doesn't even look at. These are the famous H-blocks. There are a total of nine. We don't know if there were more before, but nine remain, and each one is a different shape and size. They are not identical. Something else you will notice is you see the little false door in the middle and the little false door in the middle. But this one does not have one because it's unfinished, both in the top and in the bottom. These corners here are very crisp and finished. But when we come to this one, the corners are still rounded. Again, indicating that this one was never finished. Also, in terms of magnetics, watch what happens to the compass. Also, as we move the compass towards the false door, look what happens. So now we're going to do a caliper test of the spacing here of these drill holes. Almost perfect. And also you notice this slot perfectly aligned to the outside. This is not Bronze Age technology of the Tiwanaku culture. This is high technology. And how could high technology have existed at least 2,000 years ago, which is the conventional timeline of the construction of this site? Now, the age blocks are basically the most um, complex shapes. Here we see basically a perfect 90 degree angle but when we go to the inside here we can see as engineer Christopher Dunn noted early on that it's a dovetail shape the distance here is narrower than the distance there And the flatness of the surface is astonishing. Again, it's important to note that here we have the finished surface. And unfinished surface. So, what we're looking at are at least two types of technology. One is a rough form of cutting, almost like sandblasting of the surface, creating rounded corners, and then a more precise tool that does the flattening and the corners. Now, we've had many engineers here, and they can't understand or do not understand what type of technology today 
could create that effect. And there's no way in hell that the Tiwanaku Bronze Age culture of between 1,000 and 2,000 years ago, that they had a technology that could possibly do this. So obviously, Pumapunku was created by a high-tech culture existing more than 2,000 years ago. We will see compelling evidence that the site was destroyed more than, or more than 2,000 years ago by some kind of cataclysm, catastrophic damage, because we'll see beautiful stone that's obviously been buried in the ground, caused by some cataclysm, and evidence that there is mud still covering many surfaces. And here is an example of an excavation. You can see these stones were found in place and they have the same level of precision as the stone I just showed you. And growing scientific geological evidence is telling us that a great cataclysm happened about 12,000 years ago that affected many sites around the world, including this one. And the timeline, interestingly, fits in with Plato's account of the destruction of Atlantis, which according to his records would have happened 11,700 years ago. We also find these two interesting shapes repeated over and over. This door with a double jam or double lintel, and down below, this shape. And these red sandstone slabs, one of them originally weighing more than 130 tons. The quarry is up and over those mountains 14 kilometers away. And the theory that log rollers were used as in tree trunks to move these stones, as Giorgio has stated on Ancient Aliens, is completely ridiculous because there are no native trees at 13,000 feet elevation in this area whatsoever. So the mystery which standard archeology span has not solved is how the stone was moved from 14 kilometers away, again upwards of 100 tons, and the gray andesite stone is actually from Mount or Cerro Capia, which is located 70 kilometers away in that direction, which we will see in a moment. So, as I stated and has been proved by geologists, the grey andesite stone is from a quarry 70 kilometers away, and now you're going to have a look at it. Off there in the distance. Now the carving was done during the Tiwanaku period, between one and two thousand years ago. They found a beautifully flat surface and decided to etch their figures into it. But the technology employed is much cruder than whatever produced the flat surface to begin with. And again, inside where the excavation has actually been done, down between approximately two and three feet, we find precision cut stones in situ, in place, 
and protruding, protruding from the walls, again indica indicating some kind of catastrophic event happened here. And so when you ask the archaeologists, why have you only dug two and a half feet to three feet down? They say, because there's nothing underneath that. And the only way to prove that would be to actually dig deeper than three feet. However, Antonio Portugal of Bolivia and a team did ground penetrating radar work here. And they discovered that there are chambers, hollow chambers, under the surface of this site, well, it's highly unlikely that the government will ever allow excavations to prove that. And again, with the theme of the anomalous magnetics, this stone here is particularly intriguing. So the compass is facing, uh, facing east-west with the red part facing west. And look what happens when we lower it down onto the stone itself. 180 degree change. Again, back up. So it's at intriguing sites such as this, as well as Tiwanaku, as well as many places in the Sacred Valley of Peru and Cusco, Peru, and also, of course, Egypt, that we find anomalies which do not fit the conventional historical archaeological record. We're seeing dates and technologies older than is accepted by mainstream archaeology. We're also seeing magnetic anomalies, which could have been part of the original function of the site as well, possibly, as how it was transported in the first place. So we are now, all of us, rewriting the history of humanity. Now we're seeing indications that 12,000 plus years ago, there were technologies on this planet by unknown cultures in some cases, more sophisticated than what we have today. Now, another tool we employ here is called a Tesla meter or a magnetometer. You see here, hopefully, it's registering 61 microteslas. But when we go inside the H block, it varies. Now it's 27. At this corner, it's 9.2. Then out this way, going back up, it goes up on the outer edge to 54. So we do know that the gray andesite stone from the quarry 70 kilometers away contains magnetite, which of course is magnetic. That's according to geologists. But the curious thing is the magnetite would have been laid down when the stone formed as a volcanic material. But why the variation? There appears to be a direct relationship of some kind between the shape of the H block and the actual readings that the Tesla meter or magnetometer is telling us. So further expl explorations will hopefully allow us more insight into this. It would be great to have more geologists with us at hiddenincatours.com. We invite you to come with us, and engineers, and anybody else. So, Dr. Weischer, you are a um, electronics engineer from the United States. Uh, I'd like to know your impressions of the stone craftsmanship, the possible evidence of some kind of cataclysmic event, the fact that the stone is brought from between 14 and 70 kilometers away, and just your overall impressions, uh, and also the magnetism, so your overall, overall impressions of Puma Punku. Well, I think it's unequivocal that it was created and engineered by a very advanced technology 
that uh, is not from the Amara Indians. Um, we're dealing with very precision drilling. We're dealing with very precision stonework. We're dealing with very precision transportation. We're dealing with a site that, from its position, must be at least 12,000 years old because we know what the water table was, what the water level was at that time. Clearly there was a dock there. Um, for what purpose, to what end, I have no idea. But clearly and unequivocally, the technology that is involved with the construction of this and the, and the fact that it's just, it's in, it's in tatters, it's in pieces. So some cataclysmic event obviously destroyed it, but for what purpose, I have no idea. It's just absolutely fantastic.